Lección 211. ¿Quiénes quedan? Cuarta parte. Today we get to hear from the chefs, the judges. Many of you are going to be owners or employees or investors or managers in hotels or resorts, places where there are restaurants. Maybe you'll work in a really special cafe or maybe you'll just become a really interested and great cook at home and for family events. We're in luck today. We're going to get some great advice and points of view from Los Tres Jueces. I won't be speaking Spanish today because I want to stay out of the way and let you hear what these people have to say. Some of you will recognize all of the words that you see on the screen. And if you don't, don't worry about it. Just keep absorbing this stuff. You know how I feel about that. You know how I feel about that. From one extreme to another, the salt, you know, my, that's, that's always a problem with cooks, you know. You got, they, get, they go from one extreme to another. The next time, these guys are going to be really... Uh, I know, you, tell them, you tell them too much salt, next time they'll... They're going to see no more yeah. salt. Yeah, they'll be some nervous. They're not use any salt this time. Why does it go from one extreme to the other with salt? Uh, I think it's nerves with these students. Even professionals? Not even, well, not professionals, but if you've got your people on the line, you know, you, you chastise them for over seasoning. The next time you come back and taste something, you say, well, where's the salt? You know, don't, you have, it's, salt is like so important. You've got to just season as you go. You've got to start out. You've got to build your flavors. You've got to build depth of flavor, the body, you know. The well, salt? a lot of people, they don't pull it off and then taste it. They, they're still cooking, so it's not. Um, reducing, you know, the more reduced, it's going to be a little saltier. And then that, that's what, you know, she had said she thought she put plenty of salt, but it, it was going to reduce by, I don't know, a third of where she was at when she put the salt in. So, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to seem saltier after it's 66% of what it was when you first tasted it. Yeah. I think what they got to do is pull it off, you know, let it stop cooking, taste it. Um, and if it needs to cook a little more, you know, but at least they have some kind of idea about the salt, you know, they're still cooking it and it's still cooking and boiling away and... And you got to bear in mind as well if your hot food is going to taste more, much more saltier. When it cools down, the salt won't be as apparent, you know, it'll be... If you're going to make something that's going to be served cold, you got to season it a little bit extra than you would if you're going to serve it hot. Because when it gets cold, it, it just doesn't taste as salty. Okay. So like making pâtés and terrines and cold dishes, you know, salads. Do you ever get bored? I mean, you're talking about making the same thing over and over and you get really good at it. How do you... You always have something going on in your kitchen. I mean, not, not the recipe, you mean? Uh, you know, recipes even being a chain. You know, we have different things going on. You have different personalities. You trying stuff, you know. Um, it's just always different. Every day it's always different for me. You know, I when I think that something's, oh yeah, today would be an easy day. Oh, no. <laughs> something's going on. I mean, I manage multi-outlets, so I always have something going on. There's completely every day is never the same because between banquets and outings and everything else that, have, that, that we have going on, you know, tours, kids groups coming through from Future Farmers America and things like that, there's always something different going on. So when you have multi-outlets, it's completely different than just being in a, a kitchen that just produces consistency food. That's got to happen on its own. You have to have the staff in place and have the training to make sure it happens all the time. So what you're talking about being a chef is more than just working with food. You got to worry about cost. You got to worry about employees. You got to worry about safety. You know, uh, people getting people through your door. Cooking's the the minor part of the job. You get the recipe set up, you get the training, and that should happen on its own. Hopefully, really, that's, right. what, that's what cooking is. I mean, it's I mean, it's it's running a kitchen, it's running a business, and you have to the numbers and like you said, dealing with the employees and having the staffing you need to make it happen. I mean, those things are all important. I mean, you you could be the best cook in the world, but if it takes ten cooks to run your operation, and you only have three cooks, and you have a full house of people coming, it's not going to work. So you have to. You have to put a plan in place and have an emergency plan sometimes when, when things could change on you very quickly because it's always changing in the restaurant industry. Right. And I, I suppose for me it, it, you know, a different situation because I work for a private country club so I've got a lot more room for creativity. It's so 
but being bored is not something I have to worry about. We, you know, we we do a very diverse menu, lots of different things. So it's you know totally different. And as I said, like probably managing your employees is probably the, the biggest challenge. You know, keeping on the cutting edge is what I have to do. You know, because my membership goes, they travel all over the world. They spend a lot of time in Florida in the in the winter, and they head up north in the summer to cool down. You know, so they've they've eaten in the best restaurants in the world. Students in K to eight, what could they be doing, and maybe their parents be doing with them, or even teachers, to prepare people for a life of. Uh, more enjoyment with cooking because I'm sure you look at it that way too, not just a way to make money. Oh yeah. And what and what could yeah. they, what 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 could they do? Just whether they're going into it for their own entertainment and pleasure, or for maybe one day, you know, being where you're at. Very very simple math is I mean the most important thing. I mean cooking is really math and science. Those are the two things that you I mean cooking combines. I mean baking and pastries is all all mathematics. It's all recipe. And even cooking anything, it's you know two to one or three to one or whatever you know the conversion rates are. You have to understand very basic math to put orders together, you know to to have inventory. Those things are all basic things you need to have. Sure. Yeah. Um, leave, uh, just working with them in the kitchen, you know, throw them in the kitchen, have them help you, you know, cook a bake a cake or you know cook dinner. You know, so they won't be scared of the food. I think a lot of people are scared of food. They're scared of food. What do you mean? They, um, they're scared to try. You know, it's just like he has, he has to be on the cutting edge. You know, he has to try new things. You know, uh, a lot of people, they're, they're scared. They're fearful of, well, it might not taste right. Yeah, true, it might not taste right, but you know at that point it don't taste right. There, you know, there's so you there's no wrong again. way to cook. Yeah, it's no wrong way to no cook. No wrong way to cook. There's no, these are the rules you have to follow. In our business, there's no rules to uh, the, the cooking. A lot of the times it, the parents should get involved with their kids, you know, if they're cooking breakfast or whatever, say, here, this is what they're doing. Every time I, every time I make an omelet, I got two guys running over wanting to crack the eggs, you know, and if I don't let them crack them, or, if, I, if I'm in a rush and they don't crack that egg, it's, it's holy war, I've got to crack more eggs, you know. They want to be in there making cookies if we make those and doing a lot of baking. Is, baking is a lot of easy, easy stuff. Do something easy with them, get them interested in it. My son, he'll, you know, he's, the Food Network is one of his things he likes to watch, along with Nickelodeon, but he, Good Eats is one of his favorite shows. He'll watch that, he'll watch um, the cake decorators, he loves watching cooking shows. So if they're interested, in, of course, me being a chef is obviously makes his interest even more. But he'll he'll pick up my cooking magazines, my cookbooks, and. But Chef Tony told me the other day when I was doing a little interview in his office that too many people watch those cooking shows and get the wrong idea of what it takes. Oh yeah, yeah I think the, the some of the students they get they they really feel like when they graduate they can go out and open up their own restaurant and be successful at it, and. That's not going to happen. I mean, you know, it's, no. uh, it's a lot of hard work. You know, no matter what, you can go into private sector. You can go into uh, uh, hospitals. You can go into uh, chains. Uh, it's hard work. I find it ironic a lot of times over here on the schools that, you know, people go to, to university or to college and they spend their first year deciding what they want to be, you know. When I went to school, I said, okay, I want to be a chef, and I was no ifs, ands, or boos, or baz, you know. That's what I wanted to do, and that's where I went, you know. The hours it takes to get to, you know, a point in your career where you know you hold the title of executive chef, I mean, the school can't teach you with the hard work part of it. I mean, going to work at 9 in the morning on a Friday and getting off at midnight isn't, you know, practical to everybody's life. You know, you have to be able to make sacrifices, and there, there's a lot more. You can make the best food, you can have the best personality, you can be the best chef in the world, but if you don't have the marketing, you don't have the advertising behind it, people may not know you're out there. They may not know to come to your, your restaurant if you have your own business. When you talk about having your own place, it's it's hard to make it having your own place. That's why if you can find a good job out there that can support you and you can pay all your bills and, and you'll live happily, you know, those are the jobs we're looking for. We all want to have a job that we can, you know, survive at. You have to make sacrifices. There's, there's times, you know, you don't see the sun <laughs> you go in at 7 in the morning, and you might not leave until, you know, after sunset or later. Okay, let's do just one little quick number thing. Scale of 1 to 10, how glad are you to be a chef? 
I'd say a 10. A uh, 10. Oh, 10 for sure. I mean, I love what I do. Thank you.